that's not all. What? Page 296. What? What? what, what? <laughs> he could be reading from any book right now, right? He could be reading from Harry Potter. He could be, be reading about the, the Sorcerer's Stone or something. And that's not all. Look at this, you know? Uh, Harry looked into the mirror and saw his parents. <laughs> Want to watch Burger King short video about you? Oh, this is 15 minutes. We, okay. Yeah, you know, how, how can I resist? Borgar. Most vulgar example, the most vulgar example of, of leftism, you know, supporting imperialism. And that is the great Jabba the Bosch. I love the SL Battalion. <laughs> That's me. I sound I mean, like we, that. We're going to talk about the great job of the Bosch. We got a, got two clips of here. I'm sorry to have to do this to you to show you clips of Bosch. Um, we've got two. Who started the uh, Jabba the Bosch thing? By the way, I do think it's funny that somebody who looks like Kayla Ma the the thing that the thing that's most um I feel kind of bad making fun of Kayla Maupin's appearance because it just seems to be kind of unchangeable. Like I don't know if there's anything he could do. You know what I mean? Two very short clips here. And, and this shows you, one, how Vosh thinks, which is probably the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Two, how Vosh lies and how he's inaccurate. And True. three, uh, you know, where we're at. I mean, this is the guy who's been propped up as the voice of socialism. They've had him on the Hill, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hill Rising. You know, they've had him on there. Wait, when, the, when, wait, when have I been on the Hill? When has that happened? Uh, when, when have I been on Rising? What, yeah. Okay. He means the Crystal and Kyle show? That's a different show. Okay. Rising the Hill. They've had him on that show with Crystal Ball, and now it's Kim Iverson who's on there. And um, thank you. Thank you very much, Gordon Oster. Oster yes, no, he's, he's specifically uh, you know, mentioning uh, the. This guy, they Hill. are trying to make okay. him. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he's in Congress someday. I mean, that's how serious. And this is, this is the level of intellectual Aww. depth that the pro imperialist socialist, Jabba the Bosch, uh, Beverly Hills, child of rich Hollywood parents who supports the Azov Battalion and has some s a history of strange comments about child. This is him. That I'm opposed to it. Um, he's a, so he's like very, he didn't like those. I'm talking about our conference. Two clips of him. The first one I'm going to show you. This is Bosch. He plays a clip from my speech at the conference that someone audio recorded. Somebody who came to the conference audio recorded it. And he, he, plays the clip of me talking and reacts to it. And I want you to pay very close attention to how this goes, right? MLK Memorial made in China. I don't know anything about that. MLK Memorial. Doesn't China hate black China. people? All right, writing it down. Um, but uh, this is the first clip. And I want you to see here, this, this will show you how Vosh thinks, because this is very mm -hmm. telling. This is Vosh reacting. Uh -huh reacting to a clip from my uh -huh. opening remarks at the conference Whoa. here man oh do we have a uh... it's me here we go we have burger king himself with just some audio i suppose of the global capitalist system and they did this by organizing the economy to serve public good and not the profits of a wealthy few in the 1990s when the soviet union fell the usa loved russia russia's economy was in collapse and people were starving Boris Yeltsin was Bill Clinton's buddy, and the USA meddled in the 1996 elections to make sure that Yeltsin got reelected as he was wrecking the country with austerity and shock therapy, neoliberal economics. Directed, of course, by George Soros. Now, keep in mind, everything I said up until then is documented fact. The USA. Wait, hold on. Economics. Directed, of course, by George Soros. So. That is not true uh, at all. In fact, Soros, I'm pretty sure, was really critical of shock therapy in Russia back in the 1990s. Um, you know, also, like, a ton, like, a ton of ultra-wealthy and powerful people were in some way involved in Russia's rebuilding after the Soviet Union collapsed. To single out Soros every single time uh, is, uh... I wonder... I wonder... Now, keep in mind, everything I said up until then is documented fact. The USA did meddle in the elections in Russia. Russia's economy was devastated by shock therapy economics. The USA did, you know, work with Boris Yeltsin and wreck their economy. Everything I said up, up until that point is really...
What about the Soros bit? Because I didn't stop on any other part of what you said. What about the Soros bit? Where you said he directed all this. Relevant in U.S. geopolitics and what's going on with Russia. Keep that in mind. But he just sits there and nods because he doesn't know anything about that. But then... No, it's because I don't disagree. Wait, what? No, I just... It's, you just I, you didn't say anything that objectionable. Well, I, I I don't I don't agree with the shock therapy doctrine. No, okay. I said the magic words, George Soros. Listen to this. The things in <laughs> dude. I'm so glad George Soros exists because it's such an easy fucking Nazi like uh like like radar for everyone else. It's literally just the JQ. So just just so you guys know, like. George Soros is a relatively politically active billionaire. Like, he's on the Democrat side. He's, I guess, relatively progressive. But, like, the progressivism of George Soros is like Hillary Clinton tier progressivism. And he's not the only billionaire that does this. There are hundreds of billionaires. Now, you see that? That, that, that tells you everything you need to know about Bosch. What? Wait, I, I was on there talking about actual events that happened. Wait, I didn't finish. Like shock therapy economics destroying Russia's economy, like the USA meddling in the Russian elections in 1996 to get Boris Yeltsin reelected, like Bill Clinton being the buddy of Boris Yeltsin. And the is he about to not mention the George Soros thing again? Wait, this is actually an incredibly powerful technique where you say three things that are right and one thing that is wrong and also anti-Semitic. And then when people take issue with the wrong and anti-Semitic thing, his response is to say, ha, huh, you didn't even know about those other three things. And also, why are you disagreeing with these three things that I said? <laughs> it's, it's, uh... The USA getting along with Russia fine, as long as their economy was in collapse and people were starving. I'm talking about actual facts. But then I said another actual fact, which is that George Soros was heavily involved no, you said directed. He said directed, right? He didn't say heavily involved. First of all, his involvement seems to have been criticism. So, you know, um, but he said directed, which is, uh, go back and check. Uh, we're at 426 now. I think I said up, up in 1996 election economics. Directed, of course, by George Soros. That. Made sure that Yeltsin got reelected as he was wrecking the country with austerity and shock therapy, neoliberal economics. Directed, of course, by George Soros. Yeah, I'll, yeah. And immediately, he just goes to answer 27B. Well, folks, I have a book here in front of you. This is a <laughs> best selling book, not a right wing book, not a book by a right winger. This is by Naomi Klein a leftist, a New York Times best-selling book called The Shock Doctrine. This is about the imposition of free market neoliberal economics around the world during the 1990s. And this is what it says. This is what it says. Okay. Quote, Sachs' work in Poland had begun before Solidarity's election victory at the request of the communist government. It started with a one-day trip in which he met with the communist government and with Solidarity. It was George Soros, the billionaire financier and currency trader, who had enlisted Sachs to play a more hands-on role. Soros and Sachs traveled to Warsaw together. And as Sachs recalls, I told the Solidarity Group and the Polish government I'd be willing to become more involved to help address the deepening crisis. Soros agreed to cover- Wait, we're, we're in Warsaw right now. Wait, wait, what? Wait. War Warsaw's in Poland. We were talking about Russia's. There, Poland and Moscow are thousands of miles away. What? Okay. Over the costs for Sachs and his colleague David Lipton, a staunch free marketeer economics economist, then working at the IMF to set up the ongoing mission in Poland. That's not all. What? Page two ninety six. What? what, what? What? <laughs> this is another expert debate technique where you defend a thing that you said by saying something completely different. <laughs> he could be reading from any book right now, right? He could be reading from Harry Potter. He could be, be reading about the, the Sorcerer's Stone or something. And that's not all. Look at this, you know? Uh, Harry looked into the mirror and saw his parents. Yeah. It gets better. It gets better. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It gets better.
Okay. George Soros' philanthropic work in Eastern Europe, including his funding of Sachs travel throughout the region, has not been immune to controversy. There is no doubt that Soros was committed to the cause of democratization of the Eastern Bloc, but he also had clear economic interests in the economic reform accompanying democratization. As yeah. the world's most powerful currency trader, he stood to benefit greatly when countries implemented convertible currencies and lifted capital controls, and when state companies were put on the op. Yes, I think that a politically active billionaire would probably have some investment in like a third of the planet opening up to capitalist markets. That does, yeah. Him and like everyone else, like basically everyone with the money and power and finance connections. Like guys, I'm pretty sure that after the Soviet Union collapsed, like the entire Eastern Bloc was just open territory for investment. I mean, literally, it was, um, it was, uh, uh, it was literally like hundreds of millions of, of people suddenly now just open to, to, to the, to the ability to, to invest in capital markets. Oh yeah, we have a PDF of the shock doctrine right here. He takes a, a really long time to, um, to read everything. So Jeffrey Sachs is the person who, um, George Soros is financing here. Uh, his travel around the Eastern Bloc after the fall of the Soviet Union. An American economist, academic, public policy analyst, and former director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, he is known as an expert on sustainable development, economic development, and the fight against poverty. Okay, this guy literally just seems to be like an economist. So George Soros paid what? The flight tickets of an economist traveling around the Eastern Bloc? This is the least sinister thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, you would expect this. It's, yeah. Ooh, this guy is also Jewish. Whoo, now we know why, uh, now we know why, uh, uh, Burger King cares. So to agree the color cost sex. George Soros' philanthropic work in Eastern Europe, incurring, inc including his funding of sex travel with the region, has not been immune to controversy. Uh, so it's good economic interest. As the world's most powerful currency trader, he stood to benefit greatly when other countries implemented convertible currencies and lifted capital controls. Of course, you would expect that. Oh, here we go. But by the time Russia went up for sale, Soros could no longer resist. In 1994, he explained his policy had been modified due to the fact that markets are really developing in the region. I have no rhyme or reason or right to deny my funds or my shareholders the possibility of investing there or deny those countries the chance to get hold of some of those funds. Soros had already purchased shares in Russia's Privatized phone system, um, acquired a piece of food company in Poland, sourced through Saxis work. One of the prime movers behind the push for the shock approach to the economic transformation. Ooh, Soros through sex work had been one of the prime movers behind the push for the shock approach to the economic transformation. By the late 90s, however, he had an apparent change of heart, becoming one of the leading critics of shock therapy and directing his foundations to fund NGOs that focus on putting anti-corruption measures in place before privatizations occur. Oh, that's interesting putting anti-corruption measures in place before privatization even occurs. That's actually a surprisingly anti-capitalist perspective from a capitalist. Uh, so that's relatively good. I'd be interested in knowing how he became one of the prime movers behind the push for the shock approach to economic transformation. They talk about him investing in Russia, sure, but the shock approach wasn't just investment, right? It was about the way um, the capital markets were opened and the way the government related to those... Um, to those things. And that's it. And that's literally it. Nothing there has anything to do with him directing, uh, uh, directing the, um, uh, shock doctrine. Action block. Oh, and by the way, even if you could find that George Soros had been one of the directors of the shock doctrine, fixating on him instead of like referring broadly to the groups of people who did it, because many hundreds of people participated in leading the policy push for shock doctrine is itself anti-Semitism. Um, this is the same thing that uh, Nazis did with Jared Kushner, you know? Jared Kushner did have a lot of power in Trump's administration, but hyper fixating on him all the time and with all the conspiracy narratives, like it's pretty clear, like you're not actually looking for where the power comes from. You're looking for a Jewish guy to 
point out, you know. That George Soros' role in wrecking the Eastern Bloc is documented fact. Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Nowhere in the book did it say he wrecked the Eastern Bloc. He just funded an economist's travel. Wait, that's the only thing the book said. <laughs> what? What? He didn't read out a part where he said that happened. Okay. Fact. I didn't mention George Soros because I'm anti-Semitic. I didn't mention George Soros because he's a Democrat and Democrats are communists. I mentioned George Soros because George Soros was heavily involved in financing Jeffrey Sachs to go across Eastern Europe, implementing free market reforms and wrecking the economy. Where's the evidence of that? His, um, his Wikipedia page indicated, I mean, let's see. Uh, critical receptions, economics, China, personal life. Uh, advising in post-communist economies. Sachs has worked as an economic advisor to governments in Latin America, Eastern Europe, and the former Soviet Union. As a practice trans macroeconomist, he advised a number of national governments in the transition from MLism, developmental to market economies. Um, comprehensive plan for the transition from central planning to a market economy, which became incorporated into Poland's reform program, led by finance minister Leszek Balcerowicz, an architect of Poland's debt reduction operation. Uh, so I have a fund, so the rapid conversion is full of private ownership, closure of the main insurance. Max was firmly on a rapid transition to capitalism. At first, he proposed American style corporate structures, professional managers answering many shareholders in a large economic role for stock markets. Not well with the Polish authorities, but he then proposed that large blocks of the shares of privatized companies be placed in the hands of private banks. There were some economic shortage of inflation, as prices in small enough to stabilize. The government of Poland awarded Sachs with one of its highest honors in 1999, the Commander's Cross of the Order of Merit, and he received an honorary doctorate from the Krakow University of Economics. He advised Slovenia and Estonia. Based on Poland's success, he inv invited by Gorbachev, Yeltsin, uh, macroeconomic policies. Sachs' method for stabilizing economies was known as shock therapy, where similar sex will approach used in Germany after the two world wars. When Russia fell into poverty after adopting his market based shock therapy in the 1990s, some Western media called him a cold hearted neoliberal. Um, it looks like his methods were successful in some countries and less successful than others. It actually seems like. Um, it actually seems like, from what little I've read on it, I could be off here, but I'm actually really interested if chat disagrees. From, from what I understand, like, the economies of the Soviet bloc were fucked. The post-Cold War, like, Warsaw Pact, like, Soviet Union, like, Russia, all that, were fucked. They were completely fucked. And in order for them to be not fucked, because a lot of them were just sustained by, like, essentially, like, a, an authoritarian, like, industrial economy from Russia itself. And the only way for them to move out of that would be, I mean, they needed to adopt a market economy. It seems like the issue was that countries that had relatively low levels of corruption, or at least levels that were amended later on, were ones that recovered relatively quickly. And countries that had very high levels of corruption um, were ones that didn't recover. So every country that used to be like Soviet aligned when they transitioned over to well, they were always capitalists, but you know, like full market capitalism. There was like a huge economic dip and a bump and stuff. Um, but countries like Poland, which were relatively stable, were able to build back up. And then countries like Russia, where it was literally like, hey, former party members, just like, hey, take all this state enterprise, divvy it up. You now personally own it. Congratulations. Does that make sense? Uh, it's, it's like the, it, it seems like the issue, and that would make sense actually, because George Soros eventually came around to the position that anti-corruption measures were so important, they needed to be implemented before privatization. I mean, George Soros is a capitalist, you know, he's like a, he's like a full, he's, he's one of the capitalists as a matter of fact. So for him to look at the situation there and go, okay, clearly the corruption was a bigger problem than we thought. Uh, we need to work on that first. Uh, 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 you know, um, I think it speaks to like a relatively... I guess what I have to say here is that the problems that the post-Soviet states faced after the fall of the Soviet Union were inevitable to some extent, and they were exacerbated by massive levels of internal corruption, which were probably some of the worst in Russia. Like, that was some of the worst that it got. And... While the initial push towards a market economy was defensible because it's the only way to have a functional economy these days in a global environment, um, the real problem was when, in response to that existing corruption, they just continued with the privatization efforts. Does that make sense?
in that respect that I would, I would say that George Soros' involvement was a relatively, uh, and I mean relatively here, relatively ethical one, because basically all economic and political institutions in the West were pushing for the privatization of Russia and former Soviet states, and it was going to happen no matter what, because there was no other direction for them to go. Um, no, uh, George Soros seems to be one of the few people who recognized how bad the corruption was going to fuck over privatization early on. Does that make sense? With all that being said, I feel like, um, I feel like with regards to what I understand, George Soros comes across as a relatively well-intentioned figure here. Certainly not the director of the problems, um, all about the place. Vosh doesn't know Hello. that because Vosh is a fucking idiot. Ah. All Vosh knows is Soros is a thing that right wingers say. And so if anyone says Soros, they are anti Semitic. Oh, he said Soros, he right wing. Soros right wing. Soros Democrat. He hate Democrat. He hates Soros because Soros Jew. He knows none of this. This is a this is a very wide That's uh that's a new <laughs> that's a new dono sound right there. Widely read book. This is a very, very widely read book, The Shock Doctrine. Naomi Klein I need to see a quote is a member, right I believe, of Democratic Socialists of America. And this is where I learned about George Soros and Jeffrey Sachs and David Lipton's role in the fall of the Soviet Union. I am talking about a well-documented fact that anyone familiar with the fall of the Soviet Union and economics would know about. But Jabba the Vosh doesn't know about it. He just knows that George Soros is bad. Oh, uh, George Soros is bad. Uh, anyone who mentions George Soros is anti-Semitic. Oh, 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 why would he mention Soros? There's so many other liberal <laughs> billionaires. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not talking about George Soros in the United States, you idiot. I'm talking about George Soros and the role he played in Eastern Europe. I'm talking about something that all kinds of progressives talk about. Don't just read this book. Read Europe Since 1989 by Philip Thayer. The role of George Soros in rolling back socialism in Eastern Europe, in pushing free market... Wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. Shit. So this is the framing that I'm talking about, okay? First of all, Soros didn't roll back socialism. There never was any socialism. And second of all, um, whatever, whatever the post-Soviet states were, it wasn't socialism, but whatever they were, they didn't get unrolled by Soros, they were by nature itself unrolled. They, they had unrolled. The unrolling had already taken place. Like that, they were already thoroughly unfurled uh, by the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, George Soros is making it out like these were like functioning socialist countries that George Soros like went in and, and, and forced them to be capitalist, even though like the, these countries asked for the help of Western economists and investors. Yeah reforms that wrecked the economy of Russia, wrecked the economy of Poland, wrecked the economy of Ukraine, wrecked the economy of Czechoslovakia is a well-documented fact. But Vosh doesn't know anything about economics. He just knows there are these people called right-wingers and they're bad. And I, my job is to get on the internet and attack them. And if anyone doesn't support war with Russia, they're a right-winger. He's a fucking idiot. Okay? <laughs> he is a fucking idiot. And that... I wonder, I wonder, I want to see if I can, um, get a GDP graph for Poland that goes back a while. Um, wow, this one doesn't even have a labeled x-axis. Thank you, that's so cool. Um, let me see if I can... Well, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at Poland's GDP per capita in current prices over time, and it doesn't look like the fall of the Soviet Union actually hurt them that much. Like right here, actually, it looks like they went up after. Um, so it doesn't seem like Poland was hurt that much. What about, uh, Ukraine must? Ukraine had to have been hurt, right? Ukraine didn't exist until... When, when do we even have GDP data from Ukraine from? Like, I can't even, I can't even find a, a chart that goes back that far. From 1996? Um, went, had a dip and then went up? It's been struggling, though. Oh, interesting. Hey, George... Sorry, not George. Um, Caleb Maupin, if you're very concerned for the well-being of post-Soviet states... What happened in 2008 and in 2014 to destroy Ukraine's economy so much? Out of curiosity, what, um, huh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, actually, if you look at these dips, it seems like this effect was greater than anything uh, uh, the West did in, in, in the preceding years. That's, hmm. Uh, what, what, what other countries? Um, was, he, was he talking about Czechoslovakia? Um, uh, these graphs don't go far back far enough. The problem is we just don't have, like, um, consistent data. 
Oh, here we go. GDP per capita. Um, Lithuania, Estonia, Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, Latvia, Romania, Malaysia, Turkey. How nice. Yeah, Czechoslovakia doesn't exist anymore. Um, Romania's economy had a big dip here. Guys, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. It honestly looks like, for the most part, like, Eastern Bloc countries benefited significantly from the economic policies that followed relative to what they had beforehand. Like, they grew. Um, that's not to say that what happened to them was good or ethical, because growth doesn't mean that you're achieving optimal growth. Like, China has grown, but I obviously don't defend, um, I obviously don't defend, like, China's economic, um, uh, 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 structure or whatever. Um, if you guys really want to find out what fucked up, like, the, the economy in these countries, it was the Soviet Union collapsing. Which, really sorry, guys. Can't blame Soros for that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but I would look to see more stats from previous decades. A lot of them don't even, um, we don't have, like, reliable tracking for a lot of this beforehand, I think. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, look. Albania, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland, Romania, Yugoslavia. Like, the dip here was the fall of the Soviet Union, you know? The full effect of the privatization policies that took place afterwards, the full effect of the shock doctrine, um, wouldn't be felt for years. I mean, it takes a while for those economic policies to bring about a real change. The huge dip here is pretty clearly from the Soviet Union falling. Now, again, that is not to say that the market reforms in these countries went smoothly. They didn't, and a lot of really bad stuff happened. But I feel like what a lot of people on the left, and people who pretend to be on the left, do, is they pretend that the economic deprivation in these countries came about from shock doctrine, as opposed to the collapse of the Soviet Union, followed by a desperate attempt to transition into a functioning economic system. You guys know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it's not to defend the way this took place. Now, if we take a look at Russia, um, GDP over time, Russia had a, um, a really, really, really bad series of corruption problems. Can I, can I find, like, data that goes back farther? Why is it so... Uh, it's hard to find comparative data when you're looking it up on the fly. It's very frustrating. Um, here, let's just go with this, okay? Is this data real? Is it made up? Who knows? List. Real GDP per capita in Russia, fall of the Soviet Union, Putin takes over. And you can see that after the fall of the Soviet Union, there was a long and continuous decline. Uh, their economy didn't rebound the way that, as we saw, many... See? These economies from 1990 um, and upward were going up. But from 1990 all the way down to, like, 1999, Russia's economy continued to decline. They had much more severe corruption problems, I think. Um, they had other issues as well. It's very complicated. I don't, I don't pretend to be an expert. Anyway, long story short, Caleb Maupin's anti-Semitic, and I know more about him about everything. More than him about everything. Clip right there is the best proof of it you have ever seen. I actually know who George Soros is. He doesn't. He knows George Soros is a rich guy who donates to Democrats. I, on the other hand, know that George Soros is a Hungarian-born billionaire who was kicked. <laughs> so, well, Vosh doesn't know. <laughs> is it, he's a Hungarian-born <laughs> billionaire. He nearly said Jew. Oh, he was gonna say Jew. He, in working with the CIA to funnel money to color revolutions and CIA-led <laughs> protests to bring down socialism in Eastern Europe. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm not anti-Semitic, okay? It's just this 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 Soros guy, you know, uh funded money with the help of the uh the State Department in order to uh, fund political dissidents to bring down Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I know. I've studied this stuff. Vosh hasn't. According to Vosh, according to Vosh, Naomi Klein, the author of this book, The Shock Doctrine, that documents the role of George Soros. Oh my God, he takes so long to say everything. Get my Soros. second clip. That's what he's all about. So let's just go ahead. All right, this is the next one. This is the next Look one. Look at this photograph. Okay, are there more than 40 people in this room? Why would you show this? I hope they were charging $800 a ticket because there's no other way. I know whoever filmed this was a fan of mine because while f filming this incredibly embarrassing shit, they zoom in on Borger Kang and uh, um, Peter Coffin, you know? I can't, I can't believe this. Are they not? Oh, damn, I'm almost disappointed. Well, maybe they just edited it. That is so funny. This is like the highlight of their lives.
Jesus. They look so dorky, dude. Holy shit. Haas is dating Samira Khan. Oh, based. Okay, now listen to that clip. That? Now, Wait, keep what? in mind, so there was somebody who came into the conference. Wait, what political take are we going from here? And they were there at the very, very end. I mean, it was almost midnight at the very end. And yeah, towards the end, after the Q&A was over, after people were kind of getting up during the Q&A, people had been there since one in the afternoon. It was almost midnight. It got a little bit smaller towards the end of the day. So based on this clip of something at the end of the day, <laughs> he's trying to say I'm not oh, mad. more than 40 people there. Well, there were well over 100 people there, according oh, well. to a number of <laughs> people who counted. Jackson Hinkle was saying 120. Um, so Why would you... Why would you say this? Why, why, why would you exacerbate how embarrassing this is by getting upset and providing a crowd size that small as some kind of retort? Oh, well, you know, if you if you add up, you know, we counted. I think we counted a number, a certain number of people who came in. But then, if you add all the speakers, oh and my all God. The volunteers, and all the security guards, it was well, well over a hundred. Um, uh, wait, you have to add up the staff to get to a hundred. People who wouldn't have even paid for tickets? Oh, no! Ah. We're there. Um, but you'll notice that <laughs> that's his only reaction to this. It's like, oh, they look dorky with the flags. Oh, they... And then from there, he goes to Haas is dating Samira Khan. This guy is a fucking high school idiot. He can't understand <laughs> politics with any level of depth whatsoever. None. So all he's got is like, oh, there are even 40 people there, and look, they're carrying flags, and oh, look, Samira and Haas are dating. I mean, it's like his life is an episode of Beverly Hills 90210. That's how smart this man is. Yeah, let's let's watch let's watch the opening of the conference. Let's see. You think there's it's he's not wrong. This is embarrassing was my only thought while I was watching the clips from that uh from that conference. That is true. That was the only thing. <laughs> There's more than 40, people here. All oh my God. Oh my God. He's showing the, the, the promo footage. Wait, wait, wait. That's more than 40 people right there. What? And 40 people here. This isn't more than 40 people. Also, I love the oath taking. More than 40 people. I don't know. Oh, we got it. Now we've got 50 people. Maybe, maybe 60. 40 people in a bar. He's just a lying sack of shit. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Right? Look at this. Right? <laughs> this is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god. More than 40 people. More than 40 people. I don't know. That room looks like has 40 people in it. He's just a lying sack of shit. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Right? Look at this. Right? You know, people standing. I mean, I mean, that is all you should ever listen. Look at that room. There are more than 40 people in the room. I think there is. I think there is. This is a cartoon. I'm not living in reality. This is hyper reality. What is happening right now? What is this? What is happening? I this is too funny to be real. But who cares, right? Let's just focus on who's dating who right now. Let's focus on the <laughs> high school drama. Let's focus on who's dating who and all of that. Bosch is a neocon. Absolutely, Bosch is a neocon. True. So I just had to get that out of my system. If you're, if you are somebody who is triggered, by neocon in your dad's ass i don't know my Vosh, you can turn the stream back on now the Vosh stuff is over job of the Vosh has left the building uh you know but i just wanted to show you that is the level of discourse he literally has no clue about what happened when the soviet union fell and the george soros had a role in it. he just knows george soros is a thing the right winger say and then his other reaction is uh, is like they're like dorks, man. They got like flags, and 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 who's dating who? Oh my God, someone's dating so and so. I mean, it's this guy. This guy, his like brain stopped developing when he was 15 years old. Okay, he has he sits around playing video games all day. Uh, you know, I, I mean, this guy, this guy is a is a man who knows nothing about Marxism, and people are turning to him. <laughs> to educate people about the most important ideology that like the ideology that basically defined the 20th century. So 
if you can't understand why it makes me angry that people listen to this 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 troll this this creep this this you know this hollywood fail son uh i mean you just saw that's his analysis of our conference that i said wait i make like eight times as much money as my dad does how am i hey but by, lo- by what logic am I a fail, son? Just, I wonder if he thinks my dad is Jewish. George Soros, and I must be a stupid Republican, uh, and that we're dorky because we carried flags, and that uh, and that someone's dating somebody, which I don't even think, I don't even know for a fact is true. I was there. I talked to both of them. I had- Can RT not find better guys than this? Come on. At least the gray zone people come across as, like, real human beings. Moppin is like a... It is is like a comedy man, you know? I have no knowledge of, of any relationship, but then who knows? Whatever. That's not the point, right? I mean, there's real politics here, real economics. He doesn't know any of that. So why would you listen to him? That is my question to you. Why in the world would you listen to him? Uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way. I, ha- I have to add some voice clips of him, of his, to uh, my dono alerts. It's, it's very important that I do that. Why does he care that much about Haas and Samira and Haas? Does he win a bank Samira as well? Okay. Listen up, guys. Are you ready for the ultimate truth that you learn when you're a big boy grown up? Okay. In in community spaces like that, all right, where there really there's like there really shouldn't be any women, um, because it really feels like it should all be sweaty guys. The one woman, they all fight over her, okay? Every time. This happens all the over the place, every time. It happened with Shoe on Head in the skeptic community, when she was like the one chick and she became like the queen of the entire skeptic community. You're going to see this in any, like, fucking engineering class in school or whatever. If there's only, like, the one chick... And Samira's hot. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, d- miss me with that nussy, that Nazi pussy. But, I mean, she is attractive, you know. They're going to be salivating. So, I think that, personally, Caleb is just uh, upset that Haas, uh, you know, the AK-4'7 um, Moscow gremlin, uh, w- 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 was making moves on her that night, you know. Which is funny because that would make them the high school. Uh, he's so proud of Jabba the Vosh. The thing is, Jabba the Vosh isn't even funny. At least Nick Fuentes's Fat Ian has like a punchy ring to it that I respect. Jabba the Vosh doesn't make sense. It's it's Jabba the Hut. Hut and Vosh don't even. They have one syllable. Like okay, it's t- uh, personally, I just think you could do better. I don't know. Yeah, it just sounds dumb. It just sounds juvenile. Like, I just get embarrassed when I hear it. I love Fat Ian, yeah.